What's going on, everyone? Steven here with TechMaker Studio. Welcome to another episode of TechMaker Workshop. In this episode, we're going to import the Web3 library into our Python service and make sure nobody can view an NFT until it's actually been generated. Um, and by that, I mean it's actually been purchased in the smart contract, which will then allow it to be generated by this service. Um, and uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about some code modifications that I've made because I've added in way more images and I've added in a lot more attributes. And I just want to show you how I set that up because I did that off camera. It's way too tedious to do in an episode. Um, but yeah, I'll just walk you through how I did that and uh, then we'll jump into setting up Web3. So first of all, let's actually go ahead and, and I apologize in advance if you're catching this episode first. You definitely need to go back and check out some of the previous ones because there's a lot of context here. Um, the first thing I want to do is just talk through what I've done, and then let's look at some examples of what it looks like in the browser, because it's kind of cool, I think. And uh, then we'll jump into the Web3 stuff. And again, this is the workshop series. These can be longer. I'm trying to set up a little bit more of like a free-flowing context here where I could talk for 30 minutes or an hour if I needed to to cover something, and then put the short episodes into our 10-minute tutorials. So... If you're curious about what we're doing, we're trying to get more organized on the channel. Um, but anyway, so let's talk about the code here. So if you've been following along, you'll recognize, A, this is a test private key from Ganache. Don't use this. Um, but first of all, so that's out of the way. Second of all, um, basically what we're doing here is we try to query um, Aleph uh, for this NFT. And you can see up here we're importing get posts or I think yeah get messages from the Aleph client up here it queries um, based on our private key and this tag um, to see if anything exists if it does uh, we just return back the JSON that's stored okay so it basically functions as a JSON server and down the line what we're going to do is actually like rework all this code so that we don't have all this generation script we may actually just write a new a new thing here and then we'll just hard code the address and then have basically just always returning this content so we won't have this if anymore it won't be a get or generate it'll just be get nft okay so that's kind of where we're going but for now when we're actually launching this we're going to need all of this code right here Basically, um, previously we just had a handful of images. What I'm doing up front is I know what all my um, attributes are. I have hat, hat color, frog type, background color, eye color, color. There's a cigar, there's like sunglasses or shades. And then basically we stick all of those results into this attribute object. And you can kind of skim through this. You can pause the video and skim through it to see what's going on. But it's pretty basic. Um, what what we have essentially is naming conventions going forward so i have this method and this is just here uh, as a way to get a bunch of code out of the way so that it doesn't make this like forever long um so we can come down here and look at this construct image and uh basically the first thing is we we're using naming conventions everywhere so you'll see that i'm interpolating the uh color so like we have like green, blue, so on and so forth. And then the actual file name is like dark blue dash one dot PNG. And that's just how it came out of Illustrator. So I'm opening that up. And then we have like a whole bunch of logic if it's a fedora. And then we have a whole bunch of logic if it's not. Um, and that's just because the way these images are set up, you have to, um, what is it called? I forget the actual name in uh, in like in illustration or printmaking or whatever but you have to essentially justify the images so that when I start lay layering stuff on top they all stack up correctly um, makes sense right um, so the bandana image versus the fedora have to be positioned differently because the hat is so big with the fedora that it causes you to have to push the frog and all of its details down in order to actually get the whole thing centered within the square so that's why that is sort of the main path once you pick the fedora or whatever um, now we're just saying okay if it's if it's a poison frog we're gonna make sure that it would give it spots um, we may actually add a few more patterns I'm not sure yet um, we need to get uh, 
poison frogs in, in this version, and you'll see in a second, have black eyes. Okay, and then otherwise we get white eyes. Uh, poison frogs, uh, actually, we do this up here. Um, we don't have to go through every single bit of the logic, but I'm just kind of talking you through it. Um, where did I do the, the color, actually? So we have this get frog color method. And you can see down here we're saying if it's a poison frog, we get one of these bright colors. Otherwise, we get one of these kind of dark, muted colors. And then as you go through everything, there are some instances where the naming convention kind of breaks down. And we have to have a lot of if stuff, like right here, if the hat color is blah, blah, blah. But I'm actually going to try to fix that so that it's not necessarily like that. Um, but in any case, you can see like we're just basically interpolating text using these, um, you know, naming conventions. So it's one way to do it. Um, just name your files cleverly, and uh, then you can like. I mean, it's still a lot of code, but realistically, considering that there's thousands and thousands of possibilities, it's not that much code to just assemble all this stuff. Okay, so let's get to the interesting point. We already did a video on image construction. So somebody asked in the comments about how to put the attributes into the uh, JSON. And again, you'll have to go back and watch from start to finish all the episodes that we've done. And you may have to watch, there's a video that I don't know if is actually included in this series on how to like build an NFT server with Aleph. I'll find it and link it somewhere. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're using this Aleph create store method to upload the file to IPFS, which you can see here. I need to rename the name in the description, and then I'm just passing these attributes along like this. And what does that look like? If we come over here, um, let me open a new tab. Let's do localhost 8000 NFTs, and we'll just do dash like five. Doesn't matter. Um, and you'll see uh, if my service is running, my service is not running. Let me fire that back up. Okay, should be good to go shortly. Key error attributes, doesn't like that. Let me close this window down because I think this window is actually slowing my computer down, first of all, because I did something weird in the React and it's uh, causing Chrome to freak out. Okay, cool, so I closed that and my computer fan actually just went off. I think that one page had just been running for a long time and was blowing tons and tons of memory everywhere okay so anyway um you can see now we've got our image up here the name the description so on and so forth and then we have this attributes which has all of our stuff and this is really when you look at um when you look at OpenSea, that's what they're expecting to see so they can see those attributes cool so um the next thing i wanted to do is actually go ahead and like so we talked about how we build the images. We talked about the attributes. So what I want to do is actually kind of start fresh and mint a few of these so you can see what that looks like. And then we're going to hook up the Web3 stuff, OK? So the first thing I'm going to do is put a new private key out of here. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I should have done these in order because I don't know which ones we haven't used yet. Um, I'm going to guess we haven't used this one. I don't think we have. Um, We'll just paste that there. So now, just doing that, because this is filtered by the address, and that address is determined by this private key, um, you can see here, we won't have any images available, right? OK, so save that. Make sure everything's off so that we don't accidentally create anything we don't want. And let's go over to our uh, actual truffle project and let's do truffle um, deploy reset this is going to reset everything back to zero and I just want to show how this works now that we've sort of gotten to this point so we'll do this we'll say um, cd client npm start and now I'm going to fire this back up well so I should basically have nothing. And um, what I want to do is run this. So we've started up our application. 
so we have no nfts here let me make sure i'm on the correct account here okay so i'm just gonna mint the five frogs and let's see what happens okay so we're all pending and we got a bunch of blank images so we ran into this yesterday and what's happening i have realized um, after asking some questions in the alf um, telegram for developers which i'll link to in the description um, did that image just change are they all changing that's pretty weird maybe i had something cached somewhere from a previous version i don't know what happened there um, so that's interesting okay so anyway um gotta look at that there's another thing um what i was gonna say is i asked in the alf telegram and hugo uh, who's great sort of pointed me to the fact that when you look at this nft metadata so let's do that um let's go to number one here so first of all let's just kind of glance through so we have we have a typical frog he's blue gray he's got pink eyes that looks about right okay so anyway and then the hat is black and blue actually my black and blue image was messed up so i just substituted the black on black so i have to fix that but that's okay the background is should be dark orange there should be no shades and then a green cigar okay all that's good so that's working but when we upload this to IPFS, and yesterday there may have been some network congestion or something, but this apparently uh, can take a while to get this image. And the reason is because we're pushing this through the ALF node system, right? And apparently it can take time sometimes for the ALF nodes to process the images. Um, just is what it is. So I think I'm going to have to rework, not that we've done any UX here, this is all just kind of like bare bones, but when I actually deploy this for real, I'm going to have to sort of add in some UX considerations for that. What is this guy? This one, let's look at number three. Um, let's look at this. So he's got camo shades. That's actually kind of rare. I haven't seen one of these get generated yet. That's cool. Interesting. All right, so that's a side point. But you can see we've got a way more stuff in here, so these are all kind of coming out unique now. So it's taken us a long time to actually get to this point, but now that we're here, let me show you the problem that I'm aiming to solve. Um, and it's not going to be a perfect solution um, because I'm going to have to run some stuff on localhost while the minting is actually happening, which is going to be interesting to say the least and then update the URL and the contract after the thing goes live to a new VM that I'm gonna deploy. So it's not exactly the least technical way you could do this to be straightforward. Um, but here's a problem. Right now, if I type the number six here, it's actually gonna go ahead and show me like what is this NFT, okay? And so we can actually go look at it and see like, oh, is it a rare one before we actually buy it? And so what I'm going to do is, and it is <laughs> interesting. Um, so I got to work on the design a bit because I don't know, all these NFTs, like these generative things, you can end up with some kind of crazy looking stuff. Um, so anyway, um, what I want to essentially prevent is this. I want you to not be able to look at this until it's actually minted. So that means we need to set up this Web3. Now, the reason I have to run this locally right now is because whenever I actually deploy this, I'm actually going to have to put a real private key uh, right here. And we can't deploy our private key to the ALF network because then that private key becomes public. I believe ALF is going to have some system for storing secrets. Um, let's say within, I think it's going to be next quarter or in like Q1 2022 maybe. Um, if that's the case, I'm still not sure it's a great idea to store a private key. You could probably make the argument um, if it doesn't have a lot of authority. Um, you'd have to come up with some kind of system. I'm not sure. Um, in any case... Right now, you definitely can't do it because there's no way to store secrets in a, in a reliable way. So we have to run this locally until it's actually all finished 
um, minting, and then we can deploy it where we just hard code the lookup address because right now we're getting the address. You can see here, I think I already talked through this, but that's the design of the system. So we've kind of talked for a long time without writing any code in this episode. So what I want to do is go ahead and add this Web3 stuff. Okay, so I think we can close down these images and basically, um, I haven't done this before in Python, so we're going to do this together. We're going to go to Web3 Python. I did read up on it a little bit, but I haven't done the whole thing. So let's go to Quick Start. And so we're going to do pip3 install Web3. Let's go ahead and close this. Um, and then let's just do pip3 install Web3. I don't know how long this takes, maybe not long. Um, let's see here. Okay, cool. So that's done. All right. So if we go back to the browser, let's see what's next. So basically we've got from web three, import web three. This is all going to be pretty straightforward if I have to guess. So I'm just going to put this up here at the top like this. And then we are going to have W3 and we're going to use an HTT provider. And I'm just going to put that uh, really anywhere in here. Web3. And are we what are we running on? Let's check our Ganache over here. Just copy this. You know, one thing I'm not sure about. So we're running this in a virtual machine. And our virtual machine does not have... I'm not sure if we can access it like this. We may have to open up a forwarding port the other direction. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, this could be interesting. Okay, so we're going to run that. And let's see, what's next? Let's do W3 is connected. So let's do print connected question mark and then print you can really if you're watching this and you're a python developer i'm sorry <laughs> this is not my uh this is not my background i'm gonna make that all lowercase and let's run this and let's see what happens so it did not crash that's a good first step let's come over here let's refresh this page it still didn't crash. Let's see. So we're getting false. And I'm suspecting, yeah, I think it's because of our VM. So let's see what we can do to fix that. So with a little bit of Googling, I found that the default Vagrant settings allow you to reach your host computer via 10.0.2.2, which is news to me. Um, so let's try to change that and run this again over here okay so nothing's broken and now we are connected <laughs> so pretty cool pretty straightforward way easier than i thought it was going to be after we saw those errors coming through so let's get back to it then so what we need to do is actually know how to read from a contract Okay, so this is all the setup. Here's what we want to do. Contract. Um, I don't want to create a contract. Let's just do this. Let's say a Web3 Python read contract. Okay, that's exactly where we just were. Um, working with contracts. Uh, working with an ERC-20 token contract. Okay, so contract equals blah, blah, blah. And then we can do contract functions call. Okay, so let's copy this. And let's just put this under. And contract address is going to be our, if we come over here, Let's control C, CD up, truffle, console, and then we'll do um, frogs equals await 
frog.deployed and then frogs.address. Okay, so that's going to be our address for now. I mean, this is our test network, obviously. Don't forget that. And then we need an ABI. So again, let's go back to our friend Google and say um, ERC721 ABI. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, basically, all the ABI does is define um, all the different functions we can use. Most of these, like ERC20, ERC721, they've been around long enough that there's just sort of publicly available stuff like this. I may read all of this before I actually deploy it anywhere. It's probably be the smart thing to do. Um, let's do a new folder inside of app and do contracts. And then let's do new file and we'll do, um, oh geez, in Python, what do I need to do? Let's, let's just call this erc721.json. And we'll paste that here. I believe that's JSON valid. Um, Data.json is from another project. Um, but that has the same structure. So basically all I need to do is read in this JSON. So I think basically what I need to do is start by importing JSON. And then down here... Um, just before we load this ABI, we may move this stuff around later, um, but for now, I think what we can do is just say um, uh, f equals um, open, and then we'll do contracts slash erc721.json, and then I'll just open up the file, and then we'll do abi equals um, json.load f, and then we'll do f.close just to close the file. And let's see if this works. Okay, so it's not broken. Um, so let's try to talk to the contract. So let's do this. So basically, we need to do like contract functions, something, something, right? I don't remember. Do we have a. I think we probably have a a name. So let's just after we do this, let's call that and let's say um, name equals and then let's print name and then print the name. And let me go ahead and like just kind of format this slightly and let's refresh and see what happens internal server error the name was not found in the contracts ABI let's look at that ABI because it's possible that that ABI does not have a name in it uh, well it has a lot of names I don't know if it has a function name um, we know for sure I really need to install a formatter so I can read this more easily um, we know for sure this should have a, like, owner of, so let's do this, let's just do this, let's do owner, and let's do, um, well, we haven't actually, I guess, we, yeah, we did buy some, um, let's say owner of, and then pass in the number one, and then let's say that's owner and owner. Okay, so that one apparently worked, and then we have our owner is 0x12667, blah, blah, blah. Let's just go make sure that's our address. So, yeah, that's us. Cool. So, we're talking to the contract. Okay, so um, now that we're doing that, in, in a normal situation, if we were using this ABI and we wanted to do a bunch of stuff, I would say, okay, let's maybe generate our own from our contract or whatever, but this seems to be working, this owner of. And that's really the only function I think we're going to need. Let's try to pass in one that does not exist, and let's see what happens. It may throw an error. Let's go see what the error is. Um, VM uh, 
transaction revert ERC721. So we're querying for a non-existent token. Let's do a quick scan of the ERC721 uh, functions. Let's just look here and see a uh, balance of, I wanna have basically like, does it exist? And I guess we could use just what we have right now and just do like a try catch basically or begin rescue or whatever it is in Python. And then if it fails, we say, okay, it doesn't exist and therefore that's gonna be our flag. Okay, so back in the code, Basically what we want to do is this, I think. We're going to try this out and see what happens. So we want to put this in a try. And then um, I think we, what we want to do is say accept. And then we need, I want to catch all exceptions for now. And then we're going to say that's an error. And then we're just going to print error like this. Okay. So let's go back over here, let's refresh, let's make sure this doesn't explode on us, and then let's go look. And we got this execution reverted. I don't know what that, um, I wonder what that exception actually is. I'm not sure. For now, I need to do some research and see, because I would like to actually be like um, VM revert or something like that, but I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. So basically what I'm going to do is say um, owner equals that, and then I'm just going to say accessible equals true, and then if it, and I guess that should be true, and then down here if we get caught, I'm going to say accessible equals false. And then what we're going to do outside of this is say if accessible, and I'm going to tab in basically everything. This is one thing I don't like in Python is all of the indention stuff. And then what we're going to do is say else, and I'm just going to return a message and it's going to say, you can't access that yet. OK, so let's refresh on 6. And we can't access that yet. But on 5, and on 5 we can't either. Let me go check over here. So I'm not getting, no, I am getting. Um, the ERC twenty one seven twenty one query owner query for non existent token. Non existent token. Okay, so that is a problem. I didn't actually read that carefully enough before, so I thought that was going to be non existent. What's non existent? This is like a this is a confusing message because. Let me go over here for a sec. Let's try this in the console. Let's do fro uh, await frogs.owner of one, two, three, six. Okay, so that is the error I'm getting here. ERC721, owner query for non existent token. Okay, so now I'm confused, because that is the error I'm getting. That's what I expected to get. Uh, but it's telling me that for things that should exist. Unless I still have, you know what? I hard-coded this. That is the problem. There's a trick in here. Um, we don't want to look at 10. We want to look at the ID. So I forgot to fix that. And we were going to confuse the crap out of ourselves. AK, I was going to confuse the crap out of myself. Okay, so now we get back our stuff. And if we go to 6, you can't access that yet. And 5 should be good. Cool. So now let's go over here to our, let me get out of this, change down into the client. 
and let's go look at our web page over here. Let's make sure it's still working fine. Okay, cool. And let's buy two. It's going to cost me 0 0.1. Confirm. Pending. Everything's good. Cool. So as you can see, um, this is the one that we did earlier, the rare one that we saw. Um, and then this is a new one. Let's do a couple more. Let's do like six more. OpenSea is going a lot, not OpenSea, IPFS is working a lot faster today, which is great to see. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much it. And so now we have 13. Let's go over here to not that one. Let's go to that one. Let's look at 13. Metadata is there. Perfect. If we go to 14. You can't access that yet. Okay, cool. So that's it. That's what we wanted to get done. Um, now we're Web3 integrated. Um, sorry, this was quite a long episode, but I kind of warned you up front, I think. Uh, basically, this is where we're headed with this uh, sort of workshop series, just to kind of have a little more time to explore some stuff. And um, then we're going to move all of our short content up into those 10-minute tutorials. So anyway, I think that's it for this episode. Um, there's still a couple of things left to do on the artwork side for me, so I'm going to keep working on that. But in reality, I think this may be just about there. So I don't know if I'm going to do more episodes or not in this series. We shall see. Um, I mean, really what's left right now is actually to uh, deploy the contract. Um, I need to finish the artwork, obviously, and design the website, build out some of the, like, web3 integrations on the on the front i need to build the whole website and um, make a nicer user experience but yeah i think we kind of i think we kind of did it um trying to decide i may record some of the deployment stuff it's a little tricky because i don't want to obviously put any real private keys out here for the world to see um but i wanted to kind of take this from start to finish on youtube so in any case, hopefully if you made it all the way to this point, you've learned a ton of stuff and you can kind of figure out uh, how to get the deployment and stuff done for yourself. Um, there's other videos where I talk about deploying to different networks. So um, in any case, um, hopefully you enjoyed this. I really pre appreciate you watching all the way the, to this point. And uh, I'll talk to you in the next part of this or the next series, whatever comes next. So talk to you later.